Hello, my name is Simon Costello. I'm one of the tutors on the Jack Greek Summer School. And in this video, we're going to be looking at two tenses, the future and imperfect tenses. Uh, the future tense is used for an action which will happen after the time of the writing or the speech being given. So in English, there are three different ways we can show this. We can use the most normal way, which is using will, I will eat, uh, slightly more old fashioned or occasionally for emphasis, we could use shall, you shall go to the ball, um, or slightly more colloquially, I am going to eat my breakfast uh, at 10 o'clock this morning. So how do we do this tense in Greek then? Um, like any tense, there are six endings to show uh, who should be doing it. So those endings are o, ace, a, omen, et, et, usi, to correspond to the I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, uh, as a subject. Um, you might have spotted, hang on, those endings are the same as the present tense. That's good news on the one hand, because you don't need to learn any new endings for this tense, but then how do you spot something is future tense? Well, there's a letter that is a big flashing marker. Watch out, here comes the future tense. And that is a sigma. So uh, between the stem of a verb, the main bit, and the ending that's going to come afterwards, the letter sigma is inserted. So uh, the verb powo means I stop. So pow, then a sigma, then an omega, I will stop. So it is that easy. Put a sigma between the stem and the present tense ending makes a verb future tense. There is one possible complication, which is that adding a sigma, occasionally that sigma joins with the consonant in front of it uh, to give a spelling change. So for example, the verb lepo, I will, sorry, I leave, present tense, if you want to make it future tense, lepso, pi and sigma, the asterisk tells us this is a form that doesn't really exist. The Greek would never have written this because they realized that psa is a sound that already exists and can be represented by just one letter, psi. So late so uh, is the future tense of lepo. No Greek would ever write pi sigma when psi is an option. Um, there are a couple of other places where this happens as well. So we've mentioned pi. Uh, phi is really just a p with a small h sound after it. Um, when you add a sigma to that, we're left with just the psi. A gamma or a kappa followed by a sigma stands close enough to psi, that that's the letter a Greek would write. Um, theta and most of the time zeta followed by a sigma, we end up with just a sigma left because these sounds would emerge and the s is the dominant sound that remains. Let's have a look at a few examples just to clarify that then. So we've got uh, some verbs in English, on the, sorry, in Greek on the left hand side for you to translate into English, then some on the right hand side for you to translate into Greek. Um, the vocabulary is all given underneath, so this is just checking your grammatical understanding, not worrying about the vocabulary here. If we just look at number one together, so paus omen, so the sigma, this is our big flashing sign, it's future tense. The ending omen means we, and we know that paus means stop, so we will stop, or we are going to stop, would be the answer to number one. If we just look on uh, this other side, so I will cry, we can check down here and see that dacruo means I cry. To make it future, it's still I, so we're going to keep the O ending, and we just need to add a sigma, that cruso. Okay, uh, if you pause the video and have a go at answering these yourself, um, and then when you're happy with what you've done, restart, and we'll have a look at this together. Okay, so here are the answers uh, to those verbs that you've just been looking at. Uh, we won't run through them at all, as that will get a bit monotonous. You can check the answers here to check uh, your understanding. Um, hopefully watch out, especially for these ones, grapseter, for example, with the psi, um, and checking that you've seen this is grapho, and phi becomes psi when it's future tense. And it would be exactly the same when you're writing uh, the Greek words on this side. So, for example, in number three, uh, we can see dioko, I chase, uh, becomes diokosomen, uh, we will chase the kappa and sigma, become psi there. Uh, if you need to go back and check again, then absolutely do that just to make sure you're really happy with that. Um, that is it for the future tense, um, with the caveat that there are, there are a few verbs that do things in a slightly different manner, which you will meet a bit later on in your Greek studies. But these, this is the way that the vast majority of verbs do it. And you can see it is a, just about remembering present tense endings, sigma, that might mean a small spelling change. That is the future tense formed. Uh, as a final bit of practice, here are five sentences that all involve future tense verbs. Few time ago. So again, if you pause and then restart, We'll go over the answers in a moment. So here are those sentences, and let's have a look at those answers together. So number one, he aprodite tus anthropus kolase. Aphrodite, 
will punish. So the Zeta disappears. We've got just a Sigma, the men. Uh, number two, tus nautas dioxomen. So we've got no subject. We need to look really carefully at the verb ending omen. So you know it's we with the xi, which is really kappa sigma xa. So we will chase the sailors. Ara tas epistolas graps uh, You will write the letters. Ara just means it's a question. So we need to say, will you write the letters? Uh, number four is a normal future tense, da cruce. We just added a negative in front. So Agamemnon will not cry. And number five, another one where we need to check that ending late. So I will leave the gifts in the house. So we've now covered the future tense. Let's have a look at the imperfect tense next. This is used for continuous or repeated or ongoing action in the past. Um, and the vast majority of the time in English, uh, we represent this as I was jumping, we were playing uh, and so on. Uh, a bit less regularly, we could use the imperfect tense, I used to eat, for example. Um, and then there are very few verbs in English, have and want, like would be another one, um, which often we don't use as imperfect at all. We just put ed, the simple past tense ending on. So I had a dog last year rather than I was having a dog last year, would sound a bit strange. This is a tense that does have its own endings uh, in Greek, unlike the uh, future tense we just looked at. So We've got the present oes a omen ete usi on the left and the imperfect here on the right on s e omen ete on. Um, you can see two are still the same as the present tense omen and ete for we and you. Uh, a, so s and e are like ace and a but without the iota. It's only the i and the they form that are slightly different on on. Um, note they are the same as each other. Context should normally make it pretty clear which one we are dealing with. Um, there is an additional sign that a verb is imperfect tense, which is what we call an augment, um, a big flashing sign at the front of a verb that says this is a past tense. It doesn't just happen with the imperfect tense. It happens with other past tenses as well. Um, for the vast majority of verbs that begin with a consonant, the augment is simply an epsilon added to the front of that verb. So if you see a verb and there's an epsilon at the start, you know it's a past tense straight away. Um, for verbs that begin with an epsilon already, or with an alpha as well, then you replace that initial letter with an eta. So the alpha or epsilon turns into an eta. Let's have a couple of quick examples to confirm that. So pao, I stop, epawon, I was stopping. So augment stem on ending to show it's imperfect. Akuo, I hear, ekuon, I was hearing. So the alpha has turned into an eta and then stem and then ending. Uh, ethelo, I want or wish, ethelon, I was wishing. So again, epsilon become eta, stem fell, ending on. Just like with the future tense, here are some examples for you to practice just to check your understanding and really firm up how well you know this tense. Again, vocabulary all given underneath, um, translating into English from Greek, first of all, and then translating from uh, English into Greek, uh, secondly. Um, do check. Uh, augments especially, and think about the ending to show who is doing those. So if you pause and have a go at those, and then we will show the answers in a moment. Okay, and here are those answers. Um, so uh, we'll just pick up a couple just to check the understanding, and you can look on screen and check the rest match what you've thought about. So number two, ed dacru eta, so augment, dacruo, cry, and eta means it's you plural, so you were crying. Uh, Elpisdon, so the verb elpisto, uh, I hope. Elpisdon with the long eta, so that's our augment. Epsilon's become eta. I or they were hoping. Um, either I or they would be right on its own. You could put down both if you wanted to. Um, in a sentence, you'd always be able to tell the difference there. And similarly, when you were writing the Greek, make sure you thought about this augment at the front. So ekuon, the alpha becomes eta kuon for that one. Uh, there's one verb which is often irregular, and it's irregular in the imperfect tense as well, and that is the verb to be. Um, frustratingly, you just have to learn these six forms to make sure you can do uh, this verb in the imperfect tense. So, er or en, esta, en, emen, ete, esan, I was, you were, he or she was, we were, you were, they were. Um, it turns up a lot, you will get used to it very quickly. Um, the forms become very familiar from repeated use. So finally, to practice the imperfect tense, here again are five practice sentences. 
So if you have a go at these, and then we'll run through them in just a moment. So let's have a look at these ones together now then. So uh, Odysseus ton oinon elambanen, Odysseus, the hero uh, from Homer, was taking the wine. Ente oikia edakruomen, uh, we, we can see as the ending here, so we definitely need to use that we ending as our subject. We were crying in the house. Uh, number three, hoi atenaioi tois te ois etuon. The Athenians were sacrificing to the gods. Um, this is one where used to might work nicely. The Athenians used to sacrifice to the gods would be a nice translation in lots of contexts there as well. Um, number four, we've got that arrow that tells us it's a question. Uh, Esther is that imperfect of the verb to be. You were. And Sophos, wise, here it's definitely feminine. We know the person we're asking this question to is female. Were you wise? Uh, and lastly, holeon ton hippon s the end. Um, this shows us one potential problem with an augment. It's a great clue. Watch out, past tense coming up. Occasionally, is this verb, because obviously it's an eater, did this verb originally have an alpha or an epsilon there? You might think astheo or estheo. Do I know either of those are a verb? And if not, you might actually have to look at both on a vocab list or in a dictionary uh, to check. Um, this one is estheo, which, so with an epsilon, which means I eat. So the lion was eating the horse. Um, and that is our two tenses covered. Uh, future with the sigma uh, and present tense endings, imperfect with its own endings and the augment at the front. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching and listening to this. Hopefully uh, it's really helped clarify those two tenses for you. Uh, for more resources um, on learning ancient Greek, then do please visit our website www.greeksummerschool.org. Thank you.